Hello. This is a video I wanted to do for a number of years and uh, just didn't master the technique. I've watched several different videos on how to do it. Most of them are really good, but they're all missing one thing or another. So I've kind of pieced together and kind of perfected my own technique. So here it is, how to refill a thermocell cartridge. I'm Dean, and this is the Alberta Bushcrafter Channel. First things first, it's off with the old, on with the new. This Henschel Breezer hat is one of the best hats I've ever had. They're about 50 bucks. This one though has a lot of DEET. That's not sweat, that's DEET. So originally Thermocell had spare cartridges and spare pads sold separately. That's if you, you know, if you, uh, if you wind up with an imbalance of cartridges, if you actually let one of these run down, the pad only lasts for four hours, but you know, you get 12 hours of fuel in here. I guess they just brought it back because A, they've got a new unit out there. Uh, secondly, we're not gonna talk about the new rechargeable unit they've got. Right now, I haven't had been able to get my hands on it and I don't know how to refill the uh, repellent on those and I'm not even sure if it's possible. So don't even ask. Next thing, Thermocell does not advise that you refill your own cartridges. I've got to warn you up front, if you do this, you're on your own. Um, neither myself nor the Alberta Bushcrafter YouTube channel will take any responsibility or, or will be liable for any oh, injury, death, maiming, property damage, fire, uh, hurt feelings, or anything like that. This is your choice if you want to do this, and only your choice. You're on your own. All right, so we're going to do this in a step-by-step -step fashion. That's enough intro for this, and uh, we'll just get started. So you don't want to do this ever indoors. I would even say in an enclosed garage is a bad idea because this is liquid butane. It expands a lot, and it's very flammable, and... You know, in some cases, even explosive. So don't smoke around it. No open flames, nothing like that. And uh, just no source of spark whatsoever can be around you. In fact, when I'm doing it, I'm turning these off. Um, the other thing is yeah, you can do it under cover as long as it's well ventilated. This is butane, people can't breathe it. So don't. Don't blow yourself up or suffocate yourself just to get a, you know, to save some money on cartridges. All right. Now, what do I need to do this? First off, you're obviously going to need empty thermocell canisters. Secondly, it's optional. You can have a full one handy. There's a reason for that. Another option, goes right with that is a sharpie all right next thing you'll need is pliers in this case i've got a set of knocking pliers that i use for archery these are good uh, failing that this is a set of needle nose vice grips they'll work just as well next thing optional it's nice to have a little mallet preferably rubber faced absolutely essential you need a screw and a screwdriver i prefer square or robertson tip because you may have to get some real torque on this thing and finally you're going to need butane why are there no tips in this i will explain that what you want to do it's optional. You take your full cartridge, and then you take your empty cartridge. I've done this before on this one, but what you want to do is look at the level of the liquid and make a mark. So this tells you the fill level. The other thing, uh, one, it tells you not to overfill it, but the second thing is, if you see one of your canisters with this mark, 
it means you've already filled it once. So um, that means you don't have to go through all the work, well, half of what we're going to do in this video. All right. So you've got your cartridge labeled. The next step you have to do, I like to save this cap, by the way. It's very handy. Um, you'll see why later. So there's a couple ways you can do this. One, you can get your needle nose pliers. These are needle nose vice grips. We'll give it a good grip and sort of start wiggling out the stem. And here is what you're trying to pull out. That is the stem. That's a valve assembly. Be very careful. There's a little O-ring on there. I've been pretty lucky so far, but you don't want to damage it. I'll just replace that loosely. That's with the uh, needle nose pliers or vice grips. Here's how it works with the knocking pliers. The other hand. Some people will actually go and take a round file and file a semicircle into each one of the jaws, you know, and I find it didn't really make a difference. Uh, you can do it, you can don't, it's your choice. But with the knocking pliers, the same thing, you get a good grip on the back of the stem, not the O-ring. It will sometimes slip up to the O-ring, just be careful. Then just wiggle it out. That's the second most annoying step in this process. But it's done. All right. Step three is arguably the most annoying one in this process. What you need to do, this is what I actually do, is I take the stem and put it in the little cap. That's why I save these. But you want to take your screw. Again, this is why I use our Robertson slash square number two sits in there well, doesn't cam out. And you need to take the cartridge and you need to screw this screw in here. I find self-tapping screws, like this is actually a Craig pocket hole screw, I find they work the best. I'm going to warn you right now though, you may have to do this once, four times, eight times, twelve times. Sometimes they can be really annoying. This is where the knocking pliers work better than something like these vice grips because you can actually get, get it right around the screw if it's the right kind and you pull. Now there may be a bit of gas left in the cylinder so uh, be careful with this. But ah, yeah, See that didn't work. It's still in there. I have to try it again. These can really, really be stuck in there well. Thermocell doesn't want you taking them out. All right, let's try this again. Ugh, okay, that worked. Only took two tries this time. Here, on the end of the screw, is that little cap. That's what you're looking for. That means you can now refill the canister. All right, so if you look carefully, you can see that cap's removed. Now you can fill the cylinder. The next step, there's a couple ways to do it. So step four, let's see if I can get this really, really close. But if you can see, well, maybe not so much, there's barbs on that stem. So what you need to do is reseat the stem so all of those barbs engage. Now there's two ways I've seen to do it. One, get in there fairly snug, and then just you hear that click. Usually that means it's in. And the way you can tell is there's no little gap at the top there. The second way I have found, because I do a lot of woodworking, is a lot easier. So you seat your tip, hold it there. This is where you get a rubber faced mallet and then just one to seat it, another one, it's it's bottomed out in there so you're not going to snap the cartridge. I'll show you how easy that is again. 
got quite a few to fill here now. So there's one already seated, but you can see it's sticking out. That's it. It's in there. You will see because you won't be able to get your thumb in there. If it's not seated, there'll be a little lip. Now is a good time to check the O-ring and so on. You may have damaged this cartridge beyond repair, but usually they're okay. And just for good measure, because now I have five of these to refill, just, yeah, et voila, done. All right, here's step five. This gets tricky. Some of the videos said just get one of these type of butane canisters. And it's got all the tips in there. Not all of them, though. That's what you want to do. You want to make sure you get a butane canister with the right tips. Something like this, which is made for lighters, it doesn't have any tips in it. It's no good. Now, originally when I started this, the videos didn't tell me what tip to use, so I used all of them. What you need is a number five tip. And fortunately on some of these it'll say it. The reason this is missing, half of these cans are missing all the tips or the number five tips is these were done in the earlier uh, attempts at refilling these cartridges. And well, it was only until video number six or seven I found it had to be a number five tip. And even then I broke them and I'll tell you why. All right, so here is a brand new number five tip. This is an okay butane to use to fill it. This is what we get in Canada at Canadian Tire. So, you would just figure you would take the tip, put it on there, grab your cartridge, and I like to start with it upside down, but yeah, you would figure you would just take the cartridge and push away but nothing happens. Number one flaw in all the videos. So what's happening is the flat tip here is seating with the flat valve there. There's a flat surface on the valve. There's no butane getting out. What you need to do, sometimes better to do this off the can, is you need a small file. You can use the nail file on your multi-tool or Leatherman. I just happen to have a couple of small rifflers here. What you want to do is you need to cut a little notch. You can see there's butane in it. It works. Why you do this outside? Then you just insert the tip and let it rip. Now as I said there are some brands of butane that do not work as well as others. This is not my favorite. One thing I don't like about this particular brand of butane, the tips are very fragile. This is a brand I like to use. Got a lot more tips. The number five is the white one. And they're easier to etch or, or to cut a groove in. So with that one, you just pop out the tip from the inside, put the Oh, another one decided to come out. Put the cap away. Hmm. It's a brand new tip. You also may want to wear gloves for this. It's quite cold. But then you just, you may even hear it filling. You'll definitely see it filling. What the hell? There it is. We are almost done. All right, step number six, some people consider is optional. I don't, I think it's essential. So out of the direct sunlight, somewhere in a ventilated area, you take your cartridge and you leave it for 30 to 60 minutes. What will happen then is if there's any leaks, you'll actually see the level drop. Here's an example. 
this one's got about 20% of the fluid left in it. So that means, uh, it means the tip maybe isn't in all the way, it didn't seal properly, could be a problem with the O-ring. So in that case, if it's lost any or significant amount of its uh, fluid level, I say even any, uh, let that one sit longer and eventually it'll discharge completely and then uh, you may be able to reseat the tip, take it out, put it back in and see if it worked. But if it doesn't work in the second try, forget it. If it's fine after an hour, cap it and store it. One thing you can do, which I don't recommend, but some people do it, is if you with your bad cartridge, even if there's gas in it, you can take the tip out. That's pure butane gas coming out of there. So if you got any open flame or spark, you'd know it right now because boom. But yeah, you can actually see it's bubbling away. Um, what you do in that case, I don't recommend doing that. It may happen anyway. You may open up one of these that's been refilled and it's already got a bit in there. But in that case, this is why I use the mallet. Rubber end, please. That's in there. Let's see how it fills. Okay, yeah, that is filling beautifully. In fact, wow, it's done. All right, make sure that is seated well. Get it started, but always hold the cartridge as well. Don't do that. Don't go freehand. The other thing is, sometimes if you've got it well gripped, you can take it in there and pump it a bit. But if you torque it a bit, that whole tip is going to wind up inside the stem. But sometimes, another tip, when you're filling it, you'll find it, the flow rate slows down. Sometimes it means there's too much gas pressure built up in there. It could be the canister or the cartridge is too warm. What you do is you take some kind of thin point. You use the awl on your Swiss Army knife or multi-tool. See that? Just give it a couple of pushes. That releases a lot of the pressure. And then continue. And this one's also done. Okay, so that is how to refill a thermocell butane canister or fuel canister. And as you can see, if you've had to buy those refills all the time because you didn't know how to do it, this is about a fifth of what I've got. I've got about 20 of these, maybe more. All right, that's it for this video. I want to thank you guys all for watching and putting up with me. Like, share, comment in a civil manner, and subscribe. And uh, I'm Dean. This is the Alberta Bushcrafter Channel. Sorry we lost the light here, but take care and good day. reseeding, you know, pulling out the stem and reseeding it. If you pull it out, by the way, here's what's going to happen and be careful. This is not, do not try this at home. Can you hear that? That's coyotes.